Hello and welcome to this series of instructional videos on Ecosim Building Designer V8i. In this session, we'll be looking at how to create a new model file, we'll be taking a quick tour of the building design interface, we'll be jumping straight in to start our mass modeling, and we'll be looking around all of that about some of the great navigation techniques that you can use while using Building Designer. So let's start straight away. The first dialog you will see when you open Building Designer is the file open. And typically it consists of standard Windows icons and navigation tools, as well as some very particular Building Designer tools. Across the left-hand side are standard Microsoft icon navigation tools, as well as across the top here. But that ends when we come to these three icons, New File, Tools File History, and Directory History. It goes one step further, because below that we have this outline, which is actually a preview image of any of our design work that we're doing, be it 2D or 3D. Below that, we come to probably what is the most powerful part of building designers set up to begin with. This is called the workspace and consists of three jump boxes, the user, the project, and the interface. The user you can equate to being the client. The project is, well, the project and the interface is in case you need a particular interface designed for a particular need or requirement. You can see the power of Building Designer by simply clicking on the project and selecting Building Sample US and straight away you jump to your project file with all your project material there in front of you. There is no need to tunnel through, to squirrel through your servers, your hard drives, everything like that to get to where you need to go. It's all there with inside a workspace including everything you need when it comes to permissions and the ability to, to start your design and continue your building information modeling experience. So we're going to create a brand new file, and we're going to come up to this icon here, New File. As soon as we click on that, our file open exchanges for a new, and there is one aspect here that we really need to concentrate on, and that is our, what is called the seed file, which in other words is a template file for how we're going to design. Currently, this is set to designseed.dgn, but if you want to switch out for a particular client seed file, template file, all you have to do is click on Browse. And now we come to our select seed file, which by default goes to our seed in our application. And you can see there that in built into building design, there are a number of seed files that you can take advantage of. But we're going to use a standard design seed here. We're going to click on that. We return back to new. And we're going to name our file name mass model. With that, click save. And then all you have to do then is click on open. Building designer opens. And here is the interface and the design spaces that we can use. By default, there are four views open. And if you come down to the bottom left here to the View Groups toolbar, you can see that there are four of those toggles depressed. And if you just click and hold over five, six, seven, eight, it turns them on automatically. And then, of course, you go to File and Tile. And you can see these are eight independent design views of your building information project that can be set up independently to show different levels, to show different aspects of design, to show sections, elevations, renderings, animations. You choose how you want to design. We're going to click with our left mouse button and close down all of these except for the first one. We're going to, going to expand that and we're going to come to our view navigation across the top here. This is consistent across all eight views and enables you to quickly and easily navigate in whichever area you're in, in whichever discipline you're in as well. Because we want to change this by coming to View Rotation and going to Isometric View. From that, we need to come to our first icon here in our View 1, which is View Attributes. The View Attributes dialog box opens up for us and contains a number of, literally, attributes for us. For instance, we can turn on and off our ACS by simply selecting it, and therefore it unhighlights, the same as with the grid in the background. But we'll want to turn on the grid just for a moment, and we will turn back on the ACS triad just to give us some basis of where we are. The other components of Building Designer include standard pull-down menus, including this one here, Building Designer, which allows you to load, by default, architectural or space planning, all the structural abilities, mechanical or the electrical building information modeling tool sets and analysis. We have standard icons across the top, including generic attribute ones, including our EDS across the top here. Management ones in our primary toolbar, from models and references to level manager, level display, project explorer to AccuDraw. We can customize these however we want by simply right-clicking on them 
and turning off any of the ones that we don't need. We then have our primary building toolbar here and this contains our, our families and the parts within them as well as all the other controls that we may need. And then we have our locks across there. But the real heart of building designer is on the left hand side by default is our task based interface which contains every single design tool that we'll need in our building information modeling in very efficient and handy collections of tools for specific reasons. So with that, let's go and start modeling because we want to open up our solid modeling tab here and we want to come to the first icon, first row, slab solid. With that, our slab solid dialog box opens. Our axis you want to set to points AccuDraw and we'll be coming to AccuDraw a lot in these series of videos. You want to place it orthogonal and we'll leave length, width and height just unchecked for the moment because we're going to drive this using AccuDraw. We're going to click on or near our ACS. You can see AccuDraw compass lights up. It's a square. Press your space bar and it will change from rectangular coordinate system to a polar coordinate system of length and degrees. Just by clicking on that back, you change it back. Right, we're going to extend a line out. You can see AccuDraw helps us by extending a line to guide us for what is the normal, a straight line. And in our X field, we're going to enter 90 and click once. We're then going to pull this down a bit and we're going to enter in 110. Again, just click once and now you can see we're automatically being adjusted for the height because we're in three dimensions and we're going to enter in 65. And just click once more, right click to reset and come to your view navigation taskbar here and just click on this one, fit view. There we have our slab. Very convenient, very nice. But there are different ways of showing this slab, just very conveniently, in each independent view by coming to display styles, because we can choose hidden line. We can actually enforce upon it illustration views. We can look at this and look at illustration default or without lighting. We can come to monochrome, etc., etc. There are a variety of methods you can display this by in each individual view. You can also adjust the lighting that's being deployed upon your particular model at this time by using this slider bar or you can just click default lighting. Okay, moving on from that, we need to place another rectangle. So I'm going to click on this little pan view icon here, just move this slightly up here, come back to my slab tool under solid modeling and we're going to offset this tool. It's a classic case, classic design situation. You need to offset something from, from another point. We're going to use AccuDraw, our friend, and to Activate AccuDraw when you have it, when you're in a design tool. You just need to press the space bar. You'll see AccuDraw now gains focus. We're going to press the letter O on our keyboard. That gives us a temporary origin point to start from. This is where we can offset from very quickly. And the first thing we need to do is probably just offset by about 30 in one direction and 15 in the other direction. So you can see here straight away, all we need to do now is click. And that is exactly 30 by 15 offset from that particular place. What we need to do here though is that we need to come in here, AccuDraw helping us establish the norm on this design plane and we're going to enter in 30, click once, move this across to give it some width and in that we're going to enter in 60, click once again and then we can come up here with our height and we can just enter in either we can do it dynamically here or we can use AccuDraw and we're going to enter in 85 and then just click once and that is it. Let's fit the view again and what we can do here is we can right click to reset and we can just right click on here and utilize any standard methodology to modify this. In other words, we're going to choose move here. We're just going to come down to this corner and move this a little further out like that. We're going to choose a different display style and we're going to come to our view rotation and we're going to come to right isometric view and have a look at it that way. Because what we need to do now is actually build in more aspects, more body to our fledgling structure. And to do that, we're going to come to solid modeling again and we're going to choose cylinder solid. The cylinder solid dialog box opens again. We're going to choose points AccuDraw. We're going to choose orthogonal and we are going to offset it. So we're going to come down here. The little yellow X, by the way, in the icon, that's called AccuSnap. It works in concert with AccuDraw and it's going to be one of your most powerful utility friends in Building Designer. So we're going to press the O to offset again. And this time, we're going to offset it by 40. 
and from here we can then click once because that's where the center of our cylinder is going to be and then we're going to enter 30 for our radius and click enter and 50 for our height and then just click once more right click to reset and there we have it it's so very efficient from that you can see that we have a cylinder a slab and another slab but we have boolean tools in building design and we can just simply selection use a selection set here to select all of them come to our task base interface and we come down to the sixth row down and to the first icon unite solids and all we have to do is click on that and then click once in our view to accept and now once we reset right click to reset if you pass your cursor over the whole lot of solids lights up now this is one complete solid once we've done that we can come back to our task base interface to fourth row down to draw on solid and this is building designers implementation of push pull modeling to do that make sure your line is selected and edge to edge is unselected and then come to this corner here and place a tentative point that's pressing your left and right mouse buttons at the same time and you can see now that we have this hatched green line over the outline of our solid if you move your cursor around you'll see that moves with you we need this face so we just need to click once more and now inside of AccuDraw we just need to enter 30 click once and then move in a downward direction 49 click again and then move across here to the edge and click again what has that done that's actually just drawn a line on our solid but more than that because now if we come to the next icon next to draw on solid modify solid entity you'll see that if you click in the middle of that square you can now just push and pull it's almost as if we've taken a cheese wire to it and actually cut portions out what we need to do is come to here all you have to do is take your mouse over to where the cylinder originally joined the structure and you'll see AccuSnap helping you out there with a construction line and just click with your left mouse key. That's it. You can also use Draw on Solid to very quickly come in here and if you want to line it up with a particular face all you need to do is on the way that you're describing hit your enter key and then come across here and you can see that construction line being thrown out going to click there and click once more and that's that and then we can just come in here select that face for instance and just take it out now we're getting some more atmosphere to our structure it's starting to take on a personality of itself but what we want to do now is actually go one step further because we're going to come back to draw on solid we're going to come to this roof section here let's move AccuDraw out the way just for a moment because we're going to use our draw on solid capability here to highlight this face here and simply draw across a line AccuSnap and AccuDraw to help us out here and we're going to place that line there and then come back once more to modify and just click on the line itself because we're going to be putting in a hipped roof onto this particular roof structure at this moment in time we can always change it in the future at any time we need but this moment in time design scope design options we're, we're playing around with them we're going to raise this one here and just left click to accept and then what we can do here is we can come right to the corner here and we can then start pulling that in perhaps using AccuDraw and clicking a total of 10 feet we can then pan down here and look at the other side because we're creating this hipped roof here and we just want to come in here and we'll say 10 as well and there very quickly very efficiently we're creating a hip roof on our conceptual structure but it goes further than that because if we come back to push-pull modeling we don't just have to draw lines we can actually draw shapes as well and use those to impress so what we can do here is we're going to come here we're going to come to this elevation here and we're going to offset it and we're going to offset it by two feet either direction and now what we can do now is just draw this onto our shape and we can use this either dynamically or we can use AccuDraw again to offset and impress upon this but we'll come down here we'll say O we'll say 2 2 and now we have this square which then we can come back to modify solid entity select the face and just literally use AccuDraw to 
depress this to a value of two feet and then click once to accept and right click to reset and again you're seeing some of the very simple power coming through. And this concludes this instructional video on Ecosim Building Designer V8i. Thank you very much.